how to manage endoscopy unit during COVID-19 pandemic. The authors have nothing to disclose. COVID-19 has become a global public health concern, and GI endoscope is considered a high-risk procedure during this pandemic. Here we summarize our Shanghai Zhongshan experience on how to manage endoscopy unit during COVID-19 pandemic. We hope our experience will be helpful in preventing endoscopy unit transmission for colleagues worldwide. This is our workflow. Careful review of indications of emergency endoscopy is crucial to save life-threatening conditions without unnecessary increased risk of hospital infection. Elective endoscopy should be rescheduled. For patients suspicious with COVID-19, RNA tests should be performed. For confirmed COVID-19 cases, procedures should be performed in endoscopy rooms with negative pressure. However, if the suspicious patient had life-threatening conditions and could not wait for the test result, the procedures should also be performed in endoscopy rooms with negative pressure. For unsuspicious or negative patients, the procedure should be performed in normal endoscopy units. All staff should have daily measurements of body temperature and reporting of symptoms before starting work. All febrile staff should not be allowed to work and should be evaluated according to the COVID-19 protocol. At reception, temperatures of the patients and their companions should be measured. They should also be reconfirmed with potential COVID-19 symptoms and contact history. An epidemiological survey should be filled out with complete contact information for potential contact tracing in case hospital infection develops. In pre-procedure areas, patients are instructed for hand hygiene. They should wear surgical masks at all times. Patients are seated separately at least one meter distance from each other. In the endoscopy room, single-use bed sheets and endoscopic devices are highly recommended. Only one doctor and one assistant are allowed in the procedure room. Recommended PPE include surgical mask or N95 mask, cap, disposable watertight gown, gloves, shoe covers, goggles, or facial shells. Do standard six-step hand hygiene before putting up PPE. No jewelry or accessories are allowed. Put on PPE in correct sequence. Mask, cap, goggles or facial shells, gown, shoe covers, and gloves. During this pandemic, we avoid unnecessary anesthesia to decrease exposure of anesthetologists. If anesthesia is really needed, proper PPE should be provided. For patients receiving colonoscopy, surgical masks should be worn at all times. Even during anesthesia, oxygen masks should be put outside the surgical mask. For patients receiving gastroscopy or ERCP, a special disposable device combining the bite block and oxygen mask is provided to prevent respiratory droplets from spreading. During ERCP, enteral stenting or contacting febrile patients, isolation screens should be utilized to provide another element of protection against splashing. Caution should be taken to avoid the biopsy channel facing the operator's face. During the procedure, verbal communication including physician assistant and physician patient communication should be minimized. When finishing the procedure, the patient leaves the endoscopy room. Remove PPE in the correct sequence and do hand hygiene. Keep the mask and cap on until you leave the hospital. Pay attention to potential transmission between you and your colleagues. After the procedure, all surfaces contacted with patients or staff shall be wiped with chlorine containing disinfectant. An ultraviolet disinfection shall last for at least 30 minutes. Mobile air sterilization station shall be used for 15 to 25 minutes. After standard bedside pretreatment, the contaminated endoscope is put into a yellow medical garbage bag and sent by an airtight transfer trolley to the reprocessing room. 
The cleaning tank should be equipped with anti-aerosol isolation screen device. High-level sterilization is routinely performed. Different from performing leakage tests before washing, during this pandemic, in our institution, leakage test is performed after washing. Even though potential leakage may cause severe damage to the scopes, this change in sequence minimizes staff's contact with body fluid. The endoscopy unit should treat off on the basis of institutional conditions. Telephone follow-up at 14 days after endoscopy procedure should be carried out to check for potential hospital infection. In conclusion, epidemiological survey and screening of patients and staff cannot be overemphasized during this pandemic. In addition to adequate PPE, hand hygiene and compliance of protocols are also important. Special caution should be taken to prevent transmission between medical staff. Our success in preventing endoscopy unit transmission of COVID-19 counts on every team member.